Well, hello, everyone, and uh, welcome uh, to this new panel for Console Room 20, uh, 2024. We're going to be talking about guest stars in Doctor Who. I'm Michael Zecca, and um, you've probably seen me on other panels at Console Room in the past. You may see me on some other virtual panels this weekend as well. And uh, Rob, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Rob Levy. I am uh, a writer and podcaster and um, Doctor Who fan. I... Uh, to podcast for needcoffee.com and for uh, the ESO Network uh, Modern Musicology podcast as well. And I've written about Doctor Who and uh, moderated panels at loads of conventions and done fan panels and other things too. It's great to be here. Great to have you here. So um, Doctor Who's had a lot of great guest stars over the years. I um, suppose we should talk a little bit about uh, specifics of some of them but some general thoughts about guest stars in general and how they interact with the show and how they affect the show i think it's interesting how if you look at the spectrum of doctor who starting with hartnell going through now just the role of the guest star right originally it was like oh we have guest stars and it wasn't like a featured necessarily a featured thing but then you kind of get a little bit in the perch we are you get some featured guest stars and it gets a little bigger with tom baker mm -hmm. davison Colin builds itself up to where you get guest stars and then it just goes bonkers when you get to the to the new series um somewhere during the course of six decades being a guest star in Doctor Who kind of became like a, uh, a badge of honor right it's something every actor wanted to do it's something that uh people would like seek out to add to their resumes you know um or it's like, I would argue in the early days there were some actors that turned their noses up at the idea of being on doctor yeah. i don't want to be on a kitty program i don't want to be on dumb sci-fi yeah i'm an actor um yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think also um a thing with a lot of the actors now as they grew up on the program you know every british child talks about watching doctor who at some point during their childhood even if it's not their thing like it is for some actors but um but we do have some of those actors now we've had at least one actually at least two actors playing the doctor who grew up as diehard doctor who fans so and that's true of some of the guest cast as well yeah i think too you get these very established actors too that yeah. are like you know i'm gonna do this this sounds like fun right yeah. you get a lot of that too um yeah. and it's a chance i think for them to sort of just do something different something mm -hmm. goofy um and it's purely fan, fanboy thing or fangirl thing, um, mostly. And I think that, you know, we should talk about, too, just the role of the guest stars kind of changed, right? Mm -hmm. At the beginning, it seemed like it was just cast as many people as we can, get them in, you know, because uh, Philip Maddock can't do everything. Right. And then, um, fill out the roles. And then it just sort of, broadened and broadened and broadened and i think that um the, the opportunities for it you know was everything from like oh i really want to be in doctor who to like well i'm recording in the next room i'll just come on over and do it right there's a lot of different reasons why it happened but i mm -hmm. just think the nature of the guest star has mm -hmm. changed so much that it's really interesting yeah you know in the in the early days you mentioned philip madoc of course there's a number of actors who we saw quite a lot of especially in the 70s uh would come back in a couple of years and play a different role on the show. Cyril Shapps, Michael Sheard, Philip Madoff, like you say. There was a lot of that with, say, the original Star Trek series as well, mm -hmm. where the, you know, Mark Leonard would come back and play a different character, you know, and put different makeup. And um, and then Mission Impossible was filming next door. So they go over and film an episode over there the next week and then do the same thing in a year. And um, I think that was a little more common when you kind of had a little repertoire of story of uh, actors that were willing to come back and plug mm -hmm. into roles and now it's such a thing to be on doctor who that they don't have as hard a time casting some of those things now yeah 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 it's kind of and it's fun too because as part of the uh the rumor mill it starts each season it's like yeah. these are the guest stars and then when they release them you're like okay who are these people mm -hmm. and what have they done right right uh, and you kind yeah. of go from there and I can't even think back in the 80s when JT was doing a certain amount of stunt casting. He cast sitcom actors in dramatic roles in Doctor Who because he wanted to get them into his Christmas pantos and stuff. But mm -hmm. when they would announce <laughs> these actors' names, the Brits would respond, 
sometimes negatively, but they knew who exactly who these people were because they knew their background and we Americans often didn't know who the heck these people were. And nowadays, I think that's starting to change. You, know, you said they announced some of the casting for Chitty's upcoming seasons and, you know, we know who some of these actors are. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And the internet's changed some of that too because, you know, we're able to look people up. We... Um, are able to more easily watch programs from overseas without having to rely on one of the few American channels to actually pick up a British show like we did yeah. back in the day. So, and I yeah. think too, um, you know, kind of as we, as we look at the role of guest star before we jump into, we're obviously going to jump into names and favorites yeah. and things, yeah. but I think one of the interesting things about guest stars too, is it was very much a British thing. And now that the show is on Disney, it is now an international thing, right? Yeah. Because we're getting, you know, Neil Patrick Harris and, mm-hmm. or, you know, a, Brian Gosling and it's all kinds of just names thrown out for guest stars for, for Doctor Who, right? Mm-hmm. So now it's like we're going for names that the average person knows, not just diehard Anglophiles know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I know you say Disney Plus era, but I think also something about Russell T. Davis coming back as producer yeah, because he was already the producer once before, and is is the the name that people attach to bring the show back to life. And because he's gone on and done some other projects that have gotten a lot of attention, like It's a Sin and Years and Years, he's also developed a certain following in the industry um, where there are actors like, oh, well, if he's producing it again, I'll come and work on it. Yeah. Now, of course, Christopher Eccleston's not on that list, but because <laughs> they didn't have a comfortable relationship. But uh, but yeah, it's so I'm like Neil Patrick Harris had worked with him on It's a Sin. So when uh, Russell was interested in bringing him in as the toy maker, you know, he drops uh, you know, a line and says, hey, do you, I don't know if you remember me. We worked on It's a Sin, blah, 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 blah. Connections. Boom. Yeah. And he's got him in. So, and it is it's for an actor too, knowing the producer already and knowing, you know, having an established relationship can make it more comfortable to jump in and try something new as well. And well, I think, I, yeah, okay. I was gonna say, I think Barry Letts had that draw at times too. Yeah, I also think too, some of it is the writer. Yeah. Because I think if people realize I got a script by Douglas Adams or I've got a script by Neil Gaiman, mm-hmm. they're gonna want to do that. Uh, right. I also think it is certainly the director. I think Rachel Talalay will draw certain guest stars. Yeah. You know? um, so I do think it's a more of a combination of things now than it has been. Yeah. Yeah. In the past. Yeah. Well, and when you mentioned the rumors about Ryan Gosling, it's a connection to the actor as well. Yeah. So, sometimes they're able to, for that reason, with some of the actors in the show now. So, yeah. You know, and I think too that, you know, a lot of it is just people certain people always wanted to work with certain other people so it was an opportunity to do that you know yeah Yeah. um and that was and that i think is is something really really special and there's times too where guest stars do so well they become semi-regular characters which i think Mm -hmm. is also pretty cool as well right yeah um i think think, dan starkey and eve mcintosh are two perfect examples of that yeah you know they both played you know suntaran in dan's case and solarian in neve's case before they were Strax mm-hmm. and Vastra. Yeah. Yeah. And I think they worked worked fantastically, right? And you had a list of people that were uh, it, actors in it before. Yeah. Well. I, I, Do you want to just jump into that? Yeah, in terms just of just it. like regular actors in Doctor Who, and this is basically Doctors and Companions I'm talking here. I kind of drew up a list of actors where they came into Doctor Who first before they were in the show regularly. The first one on the list chronologically is Bernard Cribbins. Yeah. And so in the second of the Dalek films, he, uh, they, they, they did not have Ian in that, episode, in that story. So they had brought in this character, Tom, who's a policeman played by Bernard Cribbins, who stumbles into the TARDIS and then whooshed off to the future. <laughs> and this is, you know, 40 years before he was well, right? <laughs> or 50 years. It's incredible. Um, Nicholas Courtney obviously um and peter purvis both uh, peter purvis played a different character in the chase two episodes yeah. before he was stephen taylor and it's yeah it's a very uh goofy character he plays in the chase yeah. too it's almost unforgettable yeah 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 it's kind of like a goofy texan character or something and, and yeah. played by a brit and then yeah 
Nicholas Courtney as uh, Brett Fion, uh, the space security agent, uh, brother of uh, Gene Marsh's um, Sarah Kingdom in the Daleks' Gene master Marsh plan. Is, Gene Marsh has also been in a couple episodes, too. Sorry, go ahead. Well, that's true. Yeah, Gene Marsh had been uh, Richard the Lionhearted sister in uh, The Crusade alongside Jillian Glover. And then that's later, true. And then later, I think she's in Battlefield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very much later on. But yeah, I didn't even really get into the ones that came in after because, like, uh, um, blanking on Barbara Wright's name for a moment. I'm sorry. Jacqueline Hill. Jacqueline Hill. Yeah, she came back in uh, Megalos, right? Yeah. All those years later with a fancy hat and all. Um, John Levine played Cybermen and Yeti before he was um, finally yeah. allowed to go without the mask. And, and actually, he wasn't even supposed to be playing a unit soldier in the invasion but i think the actor they'd originally cast to do that role was fired or had to leave or something and they pulled him in very last minute um fell into the role ian martyr was in carnival of carnival of monsters yeah a year before he was harry sullivan uh you mentioned lala ward to me earlier yeah. who was princess astra and the armageddon factor and then the next season became romana and we've done that again in the modern area with Freema Ajaman, who was a character named Adi Ola, Canary Wharf. When things went down with the Daleks and the Cybermen, and then the next season, she's Martha Jones. And so they just cleverly wrote her line into the series, like, oh, yeah, yeah. they're cousins. <laughs> and I love what they did with Eve Miles. Mm, yes. Because she's, she's in the Dickens story, and then she's in Torchwood, and then later, oh, I met your what, cousin or whatever. You know, they do the, the yeah. like, oh, I know somebody... So, you know, you have special powers in your family, you know? Yeah, yes. <laughs> so. and, and, of course, my favorite doctor was in the series uh, before he was the doctor. Uh, Colin Baker famously got to shoot Peter Davison in the face with a staser <laughs> as Commander Maxwell in Mark of yeah. Infinity. And uh, was the doctor a year later. Um, David Tennant had a very small role in Scream of the Shulka, which was technically at the time was going to be an official ninth doctor series on the bbc website doctor who website and uh this is before they knew that julie gardner was and jane tranter and everybody were pulling things behind the scenes but basically he was recording an audiobook or something in the next studio when they were recording the audio for the animated scream of the shalka and he found out they were doing doctor who and he was a huge fan he said oh please please can i be in it and they they took some a uh, minor character from one of the episodes that had about four lines and they split it between two people. So he could have a couple of lines. <laughs> um, Aja Ando, who um, was Francine Jones, uh, Martha's mother, was uh, one of the cats in, in New Earth, Sister Jet. Um, oh, yeah. Karen Gillan and Peter Capaldi were both in the fires of Pompeii. Um, David Bradley was Solomon and Dinosaurs on a Spaceship. He was Shansheath Blue in the Sarah Jane Adventures Death of the Doctor. He was then William Hartnell in An Adventure in Space and Time before he played the first Doctor in Twice Upon a Time and The Power of the Doctor. So he got around a little bit. And this is a band that didn't act until later in his life. And he's had a ton of big roles and big projects yeah. since then. Not just Doctor Who. He, only, he was in Broadchurch. He was in Harry Potter as Argus Filch. He was in Hot Fuzz and the World's End with Sean with uh, Simon Pegg, he was Walter Frey in Game of Thrones. I mean, the man gets around. Yeah, and he's been in everything. He's one of those faces you're like, oh, that guy's in everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And then, of course, I mentioned Dan Starkey and Eve McIntosh a few minutes ago as well. So. And I think Capaldi's great in um, the Torchwood little mini series. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Children of Earth as well. Yes, Mr. Frobisher. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, that role. It is so dark, his role in that. Um, fantastic, though. Fantastic acting performance there. I mean, this is a character who ends with a murder-suicide at the end. Yeah. <laughs> this is terrible, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Men can act. And to think yeah. at one time he was just the, the thorn in the BBC production office's side when Barry Letts was the producer of Doctor Who. And he was that 15 year old fan that wouldn't stop writing to them. That's actually kind of cute, actually. It is. It I is. think it's very awesome. It's really cute how much he blushes when people bring that up on talk shows, too. Yeah. He's like, Ugh. yeah. I think it's pretty great. Um, yeah. Do you have any particular favorite? I mean, I was thinking about the early era and I, mm -hmm. 
from what I, from what I remember about the lore of the show, mm-hmm. when they got Peter Butterworth to do the Time Meddler, that was kind of a big thing. Yeah, it was also a huge deal when they got Michael Goff as the toy maker. Yeah, I mean, those it, are the two I can think of from the heart. Yeah, era. yeah, yeah. He he was sort of the biggest name I think they had gotten up to that point. Yeah, and and he's uh, fantastic. They, yeah, and granted, there are other actors that they had that went on to great things. I mean, Julian Glover was Richard the Lionhearted, and he went on to much bigger and better things, and it was a great performance. There, they also brought him back in the seventies as Scaroth the Jaggeroth. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, he probably wasn't as prominent maybe when he was Richard the Lionhearted as he was later on. Um, and his he's the one that's gone on to Star Wars and Game of Thrones and everything as well. Um I'm trying to think of others from that period. Actually, there was one other name I did um find in those early days that did stick out to me a little bit. It's Andre Morel. So Andre Morel. Um, played Marshall Gaspard de Salt and forgive my French, I don't speak French in the massacre, but he was also Professor Quatermass in Quatermass in the Pit. So, at least to, to sci fi fans, he, he was a known quantity, uh, yeah, especially given Doctor Who's kind of relationship to Quatermass, yeah. it's kind of very much inspired by it. So, so. let's, uh, I know it was interesting as you compiled lists of guest stars that are yeah. re- like adjacent to other shows. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's kind of jump into that because I think that's kind of cool. So let's start with Blake sure. Seven. You want to start with sure. Blake Seven? Sure. They, they live. They live side by side in many ways. For they classic they do. And you know, Blake Seven was, of course, created by Terry Nation, and it, uh, the script editor, you know, who was doing a lot of the writing on the show for most of its run, especially after the first season, was uh, Chris Boucher, who, of course, wrote things like the Robots of Death for Doctor Who, and uh, there are. Seven, I guess, actors from uh, it was prominent actors from Blake Seven who have had connections to Doc True. Somewhere along the way, I noticed that Peter Tunham had done voices for things like the, I think the Mandragora or Helix or something. But you know, Peter Tunham was a voiceover actor at the BBC. He did a little of everything. But the the other six I really want to focus on are Paul Darrow, who was Avon on Blake Seven, and he actually back in 1970 was Unit Captain Hawkins in the Silurians. Yeah, so Mike Bates' predecessor. Um, he did come back in the 80s, though, famously in Time Lash as Malin Tecker, where he decided he wanted to play it as Richard III, <laughs> much to JNT's annoyance. <laughs> yeah, it is probably the biggest, I think, misfire of, of, a, of a guest yeah. star, right? Because yeah. yeah. it could have been so much better. And yeah. um, the lore is that he was upset with Colin Baker for upstaging him. <laughs> City at the edge of the world. Oh, seven. of course. But he was trying to be. He was upstate. trying to give it back. Okay, that is the rumor, but I don't know how true that is. But that I think that sense. he, um, you watch that, and, and I, you know, I, I kind of look at Time Lash with a certain smile of like this is just bonkers and weird fondness, mm-hmm. but he is definitely um, not living up to par in it. I think it's kind of a yeah. sad, sad yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, he's certainly capable of more. Um, on the other hand, I think Jacqueline Pierce, uh, who was Servalan on Blake yeah. Seven, did a fine job as Chassini in The Two Doctors. Yeah, she was great. Yeah, I mean, here she's manipulating humans and Centaurans and everybody in that story. And, and yeah, it was great. And apparently she was a lot of fun for the rest of the cast, too. Uh, There's stories from Colin and others about her at the pool and so forth when they were... Yeah you know, away from shooting in Seville. So um, Michael Keating um, played Gowdry in the Sunmakers. Um, and, you know, I he, he this is a case where I had seen him in Doctor Who before I saw Blake Seven. So that was kind of exciting. Um, Stephen Greif, um, who was the first Travis, actually voiced a character in the Infinite Quest, Doctor Who animated story. Um, and Brian Croucher, who was the second Travis, of course, was in the robots of death <laughs> oh yeah yeah so that, that was a case where i think when stephen greif decided he didn't want to do any more blake seven after one season he wanted to go off and stage things or whatever you know it was just a one-year gig for him um i think chris Boucher just called in a favor and cried called up brian croucher and said hey you want to come work with me again <laughs> and then yeah. finally um gareth thomas who was blake has not been on doctor who but he had an incredible per- 
performance in a Torchwood episode. Yeah, he was. He was great. Um, yeah, he was basically playing an old pedophile <laughs> whose his history yeah. is catching up to him. That that was an incredible performance. So it was nice to see him again for the end. So also uh, in the school of useless facts, Dennis Carey, mm-hmm. who is Professor mm-hmm. Cronotus, mm-hmm. was also in Blake Seven. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of crossover between Blake Seven and Doctor Who. John Leeson uh, yeah. was was famously in uh, Gambit alongside oh, Aubrey Woods. And yeah. So and that's Aubrey Woods from who is the the uh, the governor or whatever the zone in Death or Day of the Daleks, who was also the candy shop owner in uh, Willy Wonka the Chocolate Factory, not long before. Um, yeah, Aubrey was this character Crantor who just dressed as like a 17th century french fop and john leeson was his aide who was dressed in a very similar fashion and uh deep roy was also in that episode mm-hmm. and, and and uh deep roy did several episodes of doctor who and blake seven back in the day in doctor who he was mr sin and talons of wing chiang for instance um the, the man's gone on to be in like every franchise since then he's done star wars he's done star trek he was keen, yeah. sir, in the J.J. Uh, J. Abrams Star Trek films. Uh, Scotty's little friend had has played a lot of little um, characters in the Star Wars franchise, all in, like all the way through. I think he started in Return of the Jedi, if I remember correctly, and went all the way through the sequels. Yeah. Um, also, a lot of people from the Avengers. I mean, I know yes. we had Delgado and Ainley did both Doctor Who and the Avengers, yes. but there were some other folks you had too. Well, yes, some of the leads on the Avengers. So started yeah. with Honor Blackman, who was Kathy Gale on the Avengers, left the Avengers to be Pussy Galore and Goldfinger. Yeah. And then years later, she was in Doctor Who and Terror of the Vervoids. She was replaced on the Avengers by Dame Diana Rigg as Mrs. Peel, who had a good long run. Mrs. Peel left the Avengers to do Honor Majesty's Secret Service. Or she was Mrs. Bond. And many, many, many years later, Crimson Horror, she's Mrs. Gillyflower, and her daughter Rachel Sterling was in that as well. Um, and, you know, Diana's gone on to many other roles as well. I, I, one of my favorite roles of her is the Queen of Flowers on Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Um, people that grew up in the 80s and 90s in America might have noticed her as a, uh, the host of Mystery on PBS. Um, She's gotten around. Um, and then also in Honor Majesty's Secret Service, one of the women up at the chalet was a young Joanna Lumley, who then was on the new Avengers when they brought the Avengers back a few years after Diana, uh, Diana had left the show. And Joanna Lumley was our first female 13th doctor in The Curse of Fatal Death, <laughs> which was, you know, a comedy spoof written in 1999 you can find it on youtube if you want to it's for comic relief it's about 20 minutes long in the course of this 20 minute story you have rowan atkinson um richard e grant jim broadbent hugh grant and joanna lumley as the doctor with julia sawala from absolutely fabulous as the companion and jonathan price as the master yeah who's now i wish he would really actually be the master he was fantastic well and the thing was written by stephen moffat and if you look at the thing now with what we know of the Moffat era, he was sowing the seeds of the same things he would do with Matt Smith and Peter Capaldi. All mm-hmm. that, all that lines about never cruel, but nor cowardly, they were there. Mm-hmm. So, um, and actually at Richard E. Grant, he has played two different incarnations of the doctor. He was the 10th doctor in the curse of fatal death. He was the ninth doctor in scream of the Shelka. Yeah. And he was the, uh, Great intelligence. And he's the great and Mr. Simeon, yes. Uh in the snowman and and uh in the name of the doctor, right? Yeah. And uh actually the scream of the Shalka is a good story to reference as well for actors, because not only do you have a small cameo from David Tennant and you had Richard E. Grant in there, but the master in that story was played by was played by Sir Derek Jacoby. Hmm who then came back and did that again as yeah. Professor Yana in Utopia. So, and yeah. the boy, isn't that a big name to get? Sir Derek Jacoby. Yeah. That's a huge, huge deal. And also Ian McKellen. Yes. Yes. 
Um, but you know, but Ian at that point, you know, had already been doing things like X Men and stuff, so he'd been yeah. doing franchise work. But I mean, Sir Derek Jacoby, there was so much Shakespearean work in his history up to that yeah. point, and so much just more dramatic stuff in his thing. The idea of him and coming and doing something like Doctor Who probably blew a lot of people's minds. Yeah. So. I mean, he was doing some TV stuff a little bit, but yeah. Yeah, but he wasn't, he wasn't really doing genre stuff was the thing. Yeah, it was kind of cool. You know, John Hurt had done Alien. Ian McKellen had done X-Men. Jacoby hadn't really done things like that. Yeah. I think, too, looking at the new series, um, I love one of the, I just wanted to fire off some of my favorites from that. Um, I love Penelope Wilton. I think she's great. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and then also, if you're looking at Downton Abbey, you also get Hugh Bonneville later, who's also great. Yes, he was in the black spot. Yeah, and yes. then, um, you know, I think uh, we talked about Love and Monsters, but you get Mark Warren and Shirley Henderson in that, and they're mm -hmm. both just amazing. Yeah, and for, you know, the younger fans watching, Shirley Henderson, of course, is Moaning Myrtle in the Harry Potter films, amongst many other roles she's had. Yeah, and Mark yeah. Warren's got his own series now the mm -hmm. uh the miss he says on pbs mystery thing and okay. he's in amsterdam fighting crime now right oh and, I, and he's uh he's a pretty big name too that was a pretty big get for them yeah well yeah. even um is it is it peter k that plays the absorbable off on that one yeah he's got a bit of a background in comedy and stuff from britain as well yeah it was kind of a big name there too yeah is there um and um, we talked about a couple other shows uh we talked about uh, obviously with Star Wars, you've got Julian Glover, you've got uh, Michael Sheard, and you've got... Oh, you've got a ton. Um, a just, ton. just in the John Pertwee story, The Mutants alone, you've got three or four of them right there. You've got Jeremy Bullock, you've got... Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, well, Jeremy Bullock was in The Time Warrior, of course, as Hal the Archer. I think he was also in like, he's a Marinus or something. Um, yeah. Or Space Museum. He's touring in the Space Museum. He, of course, he's the original yeah. Boba Fett. And uh, he was also a crewman in uh, Spy Who Loved Me. Um, yeah. But uh, The Mutants is a wonderful little story that features Garrick Hagen, it's Kai, sort of the lead of the story, who also came back in uh, a town called Mercy many years later with Matt Smith. But he was Biggs in Star Wars. Now, Biggs in the original Star Wars film doesn't show up that much. But he was in there more in the first draft of the script, and many of his scenes were cut. He's a childhood friend of Luke's who um, he meets back up with at the end, and he, of course, loses him at the Death Star. But, uh, yeah, he also played John Dulles in The Crown. Oh, and yeah. uh, he was the reporter from Denver in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the Tim Burton version. Mm -hmm. He was a CNN reporter in the first Mission Impossible film. Um, and he was also one of those crewmen, the spy who loved me. Uh, John Hollis was in the mutants, a Sundergaard. Uh, and he was an elder of Krypton in the first two Superman films, along with William Russell. Uh, he was the Russian general in the fourth Superman film. He was Lobot, who was Lobot. Lando's aide in The Empire Strikes Back. He was one of Clytus's observers in Flash Gordon which is another film that's got a lot of Doctor Who crossovers. Uh, he was Blofeld in the opening of Four Your Eyes Only. Mm -hmm. Blew my mind when I found that out. And, uh, you know, he had guest spots in the Avengers and Blake 7 and stuff as well. And um, also, well, maybe that was just the two of them in that one. I thought there was a third one in that story. Oh, oh Time Monster later in the season, we've got David Prowse playing a Minotaur. Oh, yeah he was the body of uh, darth vader so yeah yeah star wars actors do cross over a bit looking back to i know we talked about tom baker a little bit with lala mm -hmm. ward yeah um i love beatrix layman as <sighs> professor rumford yeah and that's Amelia an example rumford is fantastic that's an example of a guest star that isn't necessarily the biggest name in the world but just leaves an impression yeah. right yeah. um and then also you know who would have thought when we first saw towns of wang chiang that jago and lightfoot would be like a real thing yeah christopher benjamin and trick herbert baxter did a wonderful job as uh, jago and lightfoot in that story and honestly though the the 
I guess I'm not totally surprised that they took off because Robert Holmes has this thing, had this thing for writing in pairs of guest stars that worked well mm-hmm. off of each other. And we, we had another example of that in a couple of characters in uh, the Rebosa operation, for instance, yes. later on. But yeah, uh, Jago and Lightfoot really worked well together in that story. And in fact, because of some timing issues in the script, they had to tack on some extra scenes just with them messing about just to fill out the story, which gave them more screen time together. And yeah, Big Finish uh, as a lark did a, a spinoff story i think it's like single story at one point with the two of them brought those two actors in did a jago and lightfoot story and it did so well they ended up doing 13 box sets of stories basically like 13 seasons of jago and lightfoot on audio and the only reason it ended was because trevor baxter passed away yeah these two men in these eight in their 80s were just having a blast creating these stories and uh of course lisa bowerman is one of our guests at the convention this year She's like the director, one of the directors of the Jago and Lightfoot series and also plays a character called Ellie Higson, who's a barmaid in there. And Ellie has popped up in other ranges. One lovely thing they've done with Jago and Lightfoot now that Professor Lightfoot has unfortunately passed on is that they've crossed things over a little bit with the Paternoster gang. So Ellie will pop up in Paternoster gang stories or uh, Henry Gordon Jago was interacting with Strax in one story. Um, because they'd had a story with Jago and Lightfoot and Strax at one point as a spinoff too, um, because they're contemporaries. Um, yeah. So that was kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, but they, they, they really were able to flesh these two guest star characters out so well. And speaking of Santarans, you know, Christopher Ryan hmm? plays a Santaran, but he's also in uh, Vengeance on Varus, I believe. Um, no, not Vengeance on Varus, he's in Mind, Warp. Yeah. Mind Warp. Warp. That's it. Yeah. Second That's one. It. He, he's Sill's boss. Yeah. Yeah. The one that they're going to put Perry's brain inside of her or her his brain inside of her in the story, right. supposedly. And Mind Warp is just nuts because you got him and then you've got Brian Blessed, who is Yes. Brian Blessed is just fantastic. Oh my God. All the things I great. saw Brian Blessed in before I saw him in Doctor Who, he's forever going to be the you know Prince of the Hawkmen for me from Flash Gordon. Yeah. But he was Augustus Caesar and I Claudius with Derek Jacoby and John Hurt. John Hurt was Caligula. Derek yeah. was Claudius. You know, there's so many wonderful actors. In I mean, that he's, he's just he's just friggin' amazing in that. He really is too. Um, not as well known, but Jason Connery in Vengeance and Varos was good. Yeah, um, yeah. People know his know. dad better. Yeah, but I mean, so you get little. But I'm saying you get people that aren't necessarily known names. Right. right. Although he, although he'd done uh, Robin Hood at that point, hadn't he? Yeah, I think that, he had. Or, yeah. So he. Uh, so there, he was a little bit known. Yeah. yeah. Which I thought was 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 actually pretty cool, um, and then you know when you when you start getting into Davison, you've got some really great. You've got um, you know Resurrection's got some some other people in it. Um, the the guy from the Likely Lads is in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Beals, Beal, yeah, uh, he played remember. Stein, right? Yeah, so we're talking he's about. The, yeah, he's in that. Um, he's Find fantastic. his name again. Yeah, he's um, fantastic. Um, and then you get, you know, they brought back Cyril Luckham, not Cyril Luckham. Rodney Buse, um, Rodney Buse. Rodney Buse, yeah. They brought back yes. um, Valentine Dial, who's fantastic as, oh the, Guardian, my God, as yes. the Black Guardian. He's just that, terrific. You know, Valentine Dial, great booming deep voice. Black Guardian, both in the Tom Baker era with the Key to Time run, and again, with the whole Turlo arc. Also, the voice of Deep Thought in the Hitchhiker's Guide radio series and TV series, replaced and by Ellen Red- Mirren in the movie. And in Red Dwarf. Yeah. And one of my favorite roles of his, if you go back to the 60s to the Peter Cook and Dudley Moore version of Bedazzled, yeah. he was the voice of God. Yeah. He's just, he's just fantastic. <laughs> yes. So you yeah. get, you know, you start to see the groundwork of what we yeah. get with the contemporary series, sort of really yeah. jump starting in. Uh, those later episodes. Earthshock had some cameos in it. Um, um, Snake Dance You've got a young Martin Clunes. His first role. Yes, long before he was Doc Martin. Uh, let me see who else we had in there. Uh, Christopher Villiers was in The King's Demons. Yeah, and he was later the Professor Morehouse in Mummy on the Orient Express. I know him better as Nigel in the. Uh, Jim Abrams and uh, Zucker Brothers film Top Secret with Val Kilmer. 
is oh, the wow. they are playing people. He was playing a spoof on one of the characters from the Blue Lagoon all through that film. Yeah. Um, with a bad perm. <laughs> he was also Rear Admiral Woodard in The Crown, who was like the commander of the, the yacht. That yeah, do you want to jump into The Crown? Because there's a ton of people. In the oh, crown. my God. There's so Olivia, much crossover Olivia, with The Crown. Olivia Coleman's in The Crown mm -hmm. and, and Doctor Who and... Um, Broad Church and Broad Church, everything yeah. under the else under the sun. Uh, Matt Smith played uh, Prince Philip to Claire Foy's version of the Queen. Tobias Menzies was Prince Philip to Olivia Coleman's Queen, and he was in Cold War. Yeah. Also has you know a long history of being in other things like Game of Thrones and Outlander. Um, Jonathan Price, who we talked about as the Master in Curse of Fatal Death, was the last Prince Philip in the series to Imelda Staunton's yeah. version of the Queen um yeah, yeah there's so many crossovers of the crown so and many... you know cold war itself has got a ton of people it's got God, yes. james norton james norton's in it um mm -hmm. david warner's in it um mm -hmm. just literally that thing's just got a ton of guest stars yeah it, it is it's a fantastic story too let me, so let me go through the, the cold war list real quick let me pull that up so i've got it in front of me so i don't leave anybody out because i do have a list of them in front of me that was season nine was it yeah yeah no i'm i'm I jumped ahead uh season uh, was it eight or nine or ten i'm confused lost them I lost them where'd they go so many notes well okay liam cunningham first of all right off the top of my head was captain uh captain zukov and uh Liam Cunningham is better known to most people's Davos Seaworth on Game of Thrones. Um, I'm just trying to remember these off the top of my head. We had James Norton, who was a regular character in Happy Valley, right? And he's done a lot of other things. Um, he was one of the crewmen there. Tobias Menzies was like the political officer there. And I already mentioned all the different things he's done. David Warner. Oh, my God. I love David Warner. David Warner is an actor that I grew up with. Um, He's Shakespearean trained, uh, had a really gruff voice, but that voice you expected a certain villainous from, but he wasn't like that in person. Um, but he really kind of got typecast as sci-fi villains, but it got him a lot of work in the U.S. And, you know, he had a very successful career of it. And I don't think, from what I hear that he complained too much about that. So things, one of the first roles I ever saw him in was The Omen. Uh, he was in that along with Patrick Troughton, actually. First time I ever saw Patrick Troughton. Other things I saw, though, David, in uh, Nicholas Meyer's Time After Time, where he plays Jack the Ripper to Malcolm McDowell's H.G. Wells. He was uh, Sark and the villain in Tron. He was evil in Time Bandits. He was the Federation ambassador in Star Trek V. He was the Klingon chancellor in Star Trek VI. He was yeah. the Cardassian that tortured Picard on Star Trek The Next Generation. Yeah. He was a man seeking the Holy Grail on Babylon 5. The man mm -hmm. got around. He did the Star Trek uh, Babylon 5 Doctor Who trifecta. You know? So, yeah. Um, so, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. It just no, I was just about him. Yeah, I, I was just I was gonna say who are some of your favorite guest stars and stories that you've seen. Mm, well, let me finish Cold War and then we'll come back to that. Finish finish Cold War, I'll come back there. There. So Josh O'Connor is one of the crewmen in uh Cold War as well. And he was Prince Charles to Tobias Menzies Philip in the crown in the middle years. So yeah, the Cold War is just full of good actors. And then his on Churchman came back for a quick cameo as Alpha Centauri in her 90s. Mm-hmm. Fantastic, fantastic story. Oh, favorite guest stars over the years. You know, you mentioned Beatrix Lehman. I loved Amelia Rumford. She definitely was high on my list of guest stars over the years. Um, yeah. oh. I loved Clive Swift. And mm -hmm. I talked about Brian Buzz. Mm -hmm. I love Clive Swift and in um, his Dalek story, and I also did like Alexi Sale. I, at first, sure. in the first half, sure. and I didn't, I didn't necessarily love that, but that grew on me. Mm -hmm. um, and then I love Benro the Heretic. I think he's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. You know, 
Um, I, both of Jillian Glover's appearances really work for me, especially Scaroth. I love Scaroth the Jaggeroth as a villain. And we'd be completely uh, lost if we did not mention uh, Duggan. Yeah. Death. It's probably yeah. one of the best one-offs that people would kind of like to see again at some point. Yeah. Duggan by, played by uh, Tom Chatham, who Chad, um, who also had a, a role of Del Grant of like seven that's been spun yeah. off on the audios to do quite a bit more. Yeah, he's a fantastic actor. I'm trying to remember some of the other stuff he's been in because he had an interesting background as well. Yeah, City of Death is just great because obviously you have Cleese, right? Yeah. And then you've got actually the, uh, Tom Chatham, Chad Bunny, even though he'd only played Duggan once, he did come back and trial the Time Lord. He was Merdine in the Mysterious Planet. I did like Linda Bellingham in in Trial yeah. of the Time Lord. I thought yeah. she was just fabulous, right? She wasn't bad. Um, I thought she was she was pretty good. Um, and then um, you know, I think you get these characters that you sort of remember like richard mm -hmm. mason the visitation i think is really mm -hmm. memorable um as well a small one that really sticks out for me um guy signer in genesis I, of the dollar i was just going to mention him that's funny he, he's he's only in two episodes he's this young colored officer early in the story he's the one that makes tom baker turn out his pockets which is amazing that went on forever but the, there's another man who's done like the star trek Babylon 5 Doctor Who trifecta. He um, was a harbor master, one of the Pirates of the Caribbean films. He was Malcolm Reed's father on Enterprise. Mm -hmm. And he was a member of the Minbari religious cast on a Babylon 5 episode. So he got around a little bit for such a small role. He, stu he stood out. Yeah. Um, uh, there, were a couple of other there was an interesting one I came across the other day. This is not like one I would say is a great guest star role for me, but just an interesting one I discovered recently. And this is the thing we talk about where sometimes actors will do Doctor Who early in their career before you know who they are. Yeah. So there's actor Johnny Lee Miller. Yeah. Uh, who, you know, British actor that's done a lot of work in America. He had a, a run on Dexter as a villain. He was Sherlock Holmes on Elementary. When he was about 12. He was in one episode of Kenda with Peter Davison as one of the kin to tribes people it's in the episode wow. for all of a 30 seconds but you know it's like one of his first tv acting roles that's awesome um i also too want to mention that michael jaston is just incredible uh, as well yeah that man had a good and he's, background he's really, on other things he's really parlayed that well into big finish as well yes um and then um i think my other a lot of my favorite cameos are in the Matt Smith era. I'm not really sure why. She thinks it's every week that was somebody was like the star of the week. But I think that um, both Tony Curran and Bill Nighy in Vincent and the Doctor were just amazing, right? Um, Bill Nighy especially was just Bill Nighy, right? Yeah. He's just amazing. Yeah. And, but it uh, fit Tony, the scene so well, too. And Tony Curran just literally became Van Gogh. It was yeah. really great. Well, Tony Kern is a really talented actor that's done a lot of yeah. interesting things to flex his skills, even in sci-fi franchises. He was the Invisible Man in the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, right? Yeah. And uh, he he was one of the aliens on the sci-fi series Defiance and was really good in that role. Very and he's different. very, you know, he's, he's sort of emblematic of what you see in Doctor Who, where you get a lot of actors that have been across the genre. Uh, of yeah. sci-fi television or yeah. serialized television right yeah. a lot of the guest stars we're getting now are have done so many other shows you know it's like oh it's that guy right mm -hmm. which is sort of a thing doctor who has just sort of um gotten known for a little bit yeah. which i think is interesting yeah. so uh you know bill nye he's great the and you were talking about people starting out i think carrie mulligan's a great example mm -hmm. so is andrew garfield are both great sure. examples of people starting off yeah and Barry Mulligan is Sally Sparrow and Blink, of course. Yeah, which is still still holds up fantastic. Yeah, you know. Yeah, um, I think she's great. Um, you also got, you know, it's interesting. You look at um, Shaun of the Dead, right? Because mm -hmm. you've got Simon Pegg and Mark Frost, both in Doctor Who, and Bill Nighy, or Nick Nick Frost, Nick yeah. Frost, sorry, Bill Nighy, and Penelope Wilton. Yep, and Jessica Hines. Mm -hmm. And we could keep going. There's quite a few other names that have popped up in Doctor Who. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, uh, it's... Matt Lucas was there as well. Yeah. The, the rival team, you've got people like Matt Lucas and so forth on there. It's like, 
yeah, there's a lot of them in there. Which is which is pretty great. And I think, you know, as well, um, you get some some heavy hitters like the the Dickens story, right? Mm-hmm. Um, with Tenet is just fantastic. Oh, Simon Callow. Well, he's just an incredible actor who's done a lot of that things. was a big that was a big yeah. deal so early in that run. That was a yes. huge deal getting Simon Callow. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um the same thing with getting um well, Simon oh, Pegg was in that first season with Eccleston as well. Yeah, he was. Yeah. And then yeah. getting um Alan Cumming for mm-hmm. the Capaldi are for you know his uh, story. Actually, was. not Capaldi, it was Jody Whitaker. Jody Whitaker, yeah, you're yeah. Right. Playing King James, but there is a connection with Alan Cumming to Doctor Who that goes back a lot further. Okay. So 1993, we had the 30th anniversary in coming, and all the 30th anniversary stuff was falling through the floor. Bill Baggs made a little film called The Air Zone Solution. Yeah. John Pertwee, Peter Davison, Colin Baker, and Sylvester McCoy roll in. <clears throat> and um, some of the companions were in there as well. Nicola Bryant was Colin Baker's girlfriend in it. Um, they were not playing the doctors, but they were still having like a doctor-like connection. It was kind of like a multi-doctor story that wasn't a Doctor Who story. Um, the villain of the piece, who I think they originally had planned to have Sophie Aldred play, but she was unavailable. Yeah, had an assistant that was at her side all the time. It was a very young Alan Cumming. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So when I heard he was coming back to do the Witchfinders, like, that's awesome. He's finally coming back to Doctor Who properly. Yeah, it was pretty fantastic. And James yeah. Corden did two uh, episodes. Yes, as, as Craig in, right in the lodger and closing time. It's an interesting story. So when... um. Years ago, Late Late Show, when Tom Snyder retired from doing the Late Late Show for CBS, he was first replaced by Craig Kilborn, who they stole from The Daily Show. And then several years later, when they got rid of Craig Kilborn, Craig Ferguson came in and hosted The Late Late Show. And of course, he was friends with Peter Capaldi when they were young. They were in a band together. And then when Craig Ferguson retired from that role, they hired um, James Corden, who played Craig, on Doctor Who. So we had three Craigs in a row on that show. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. And yeah. Closing Time is such a fun story now in hindsight, too. Yeah. It's uh, it's just a really fun bit of Doctor Who, too. Yeah, and it had another big uh, name from Doctor Who lore in it as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, Linda Barron has, did uh, work with Hartnell, Peter Davison, and Matt Smith. She wow. was the, the singer in the Gunfighters as a young woman. She played Captain Rack in Enlightenment, the pirate captain of the Eternals. And she was the woman in the lingerie department in uh, Closing Time, the older woman. That was yeah. Thinking they were a nice, sweet couple. <laughs> is, is there any um, guest stars you wish you would have had more out of when they were on that you wish you could have seen more of? Boy, that's a hard one to think about. There's so many over so many of the years. I mean, there's some I would have loved to see him come back in one way or another. Like I would like to have seen, yeah, I would like to have seen Ray from Delta and the Bannerman do a hmm. little more. And um, yeah, hmm. I think that's one of them. And um, you know, there's 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 a couple others. I mean, Duggan, Duggan, I think we we alluded to. Oh yeah, yeah, he would be neat. Um. Drax would be fun to come across again at some point too, which was one of the doctor's childhood friends or mm-hmm. whatever that he encounters. Who's, you know, he's he's a, is he a time lord? I don't know. It's not clear whether he actually has full time lord status or not. He he's kind of like just making a living out there in the universe. Um, got kind of a used car salesman look about him. Yeah. Do you think that? The role of the guest star in Doctor Who has kind of become a stat is still as much of a status symbol now as it was, you know, sort of in the eighties and nineties. I think it's more it more more so now than it was in the eighties, yeah. honestly, because the show is watched. You know, it, it's got much more star power now. The show. I mean, in the eighties when we were watching it, sure it was making some ratings and stuff, but it didn't have the, you know event show thing to it that doctor who has had at times over the last 20 years yeah i think that's key too and so you know it it it, it's bringing people back 
Yeah, I think everybody wants to do it. And I think that if they have characters that are interesting and tell interesting stories, yeah. that's one of the ways they bring them back yeah. is through, um, you know, having a guest star that like, well, we'll test them out. Tony Selby mm-hmm. who did so well as, as Savalon Glitz. They brought him back. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and he was fantastic as I, well. I think Jovi and Wade did the same thing. He, he was so good as Riggsy and Flatline that they brought him back a year later to play Riggsy again with Clara in uh, whatever that second story was. And then, of course, a year later, he was, you know, doing Doom Patrol and Titans as Cyborg <laughs> over here. So yeah. um, there's there's one I wanted to bring up. It doesn't really fit the theme that we've been talking about here lately so much, but there, it, I heard an interesting story. I was watching... A documentary on youtube a week or two back i think Gav might have done this one but it was basically about the um the design of the space station in wheel in space and over the course of watching this little documentary i learned that robert Beatty, who played general cutler in the 10th planet mm-hmm. was also dr ralph halverson in 2001 the space odyssey now the 10th planet came out in 66 2001 A Space Odyssey didn't come out until 68, but Stanley Kubrick had worked on that film for so long. Robert Patey had already actually filmed his 2001 scenes oh, wow. before he filmed The Tenth Planet. And apparently he had conversations with some of the s- designers while they were filming The Tenth Planet. And he was telling them a bit about like what the inside of the space station looked like and stuff from the set of 2001 and that influenced the design of the station for the wheel in space later on because those same designers started thinking about this when they were designing the wheel in space <sighs> that's fantastic so that's why the, the the wheel and wheel in space looks so much like the station from 2001 a space odyssey especially on the inside uh when those that film and those episodes came out about the same time so yeah it's interesting and then of course robert Beatty has done a lot of other things as well he was um you know he was in we are eagles dare he was general halsted in the martian chronicles miniseries back in the 70s he was the president of the united states in superman 4 oh so, yeah 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 but that interesting connection sometimes where he worked on another show and then there's like secret information going back and forth um yeah yeah Yeah. there's all kinds of these things i mean we could be doing this forever with these oh absolutely and i you know i i've been homesick all week so i had time to like pour through 60 years of doctor who episodes to find all these guest stars and their connections and i didn't even get a chance to dig too far in the torchwood and sarah jane like you planned to even though there were some interesting guest stars there actually there's two from Torchwood, I really want to just mention okay. two, two big names that we got there. One was James Marsters, yeah. who was Spike and Buffy and Angel, of course, who played Captain John in the second season. But the other one is Murray Melvin, who was Billis Manger in the season one finale of Torchwood. Murray mm. Melvin, when you go back in his filmography, was his, a huge film history in Britain mm-hmm. with award-winning films. And did a lot of work with the director Ken Russell, who's like considered one of the top directors of all time in Britain. Um, man did some incredible acting, and here he was on this cheesy sci-fi show in his 80s or whatever. And he was still recording Torchwood audios. They bought him, he did such a good performance in that one episode that the big Finnish folks have been bringing him back and doing little solo Billis Manger stories and things on Torchwood. Um, and he was still recording stories up until his death this year at the age of 90 Mm -hmm. and enjoying the heck out of it. One of the last stories they got him to do, he's interacting with Derek Jacob, he's war master. And the idea is that Billis Manger is like the one character the master is afraid of. (laughs) That's awesome. Yes. So, and they created an excellent character for him on Torchwood and he chewed the scenery with it. It was great. (laughs) So, so yeah, we've we've covered a lot of ground with the with the yeah yeah guest stars. It's pretty. It's a pretty intensive. It is. Um, it is. Span. I think you know the big role the guest star is to sort of lure in casual yeah. viewers, but also to give actors 
uh, a chance to do something fun and relax. It's also a prestige thing. And also yeah. some actors do it because, you know, like their kids love it or something, mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And they want something different, you know. Or or like I'm hearing through my ears when I'm listening to Big Finish audios now with some of the younger actors are getting in there. They're doing it because they grew up, you know, watching David Tennant or Eccleston as the doctor when they were kids and they're mm -hmm. excited to come and work on it now. Yeah, like, it's like it's all very crazy. Yeah. I will say this, if when you're watching Doctor Who, uh, especially given the streaming and everything these days, a lot of times you can pop up cast lists as you're going or you can pull up IMDb on your phone or you're watching. Look up the cast you're watching. You might be watching an episode from the 70s or the 80s and you may not recognize the actor that you're watching now because they've aged so much, but it's yeah. going to blow your mind when you find out some of the people that you're watching and some of these stories and some of their connections yeah. to all kinds of things. Yeah. I, I mean, mean I'm finding all these old game of Thrones actors when they were young, like Donald Sumter, there's one Donald Sumter was in the sea devils. He was the submarine commander, the nice beard and full head of hair and I know him better as, you know, Meister Lewin from Game of Thrones and, and then as Rassilon uh, in the new series as well and Ender Capaldi. Um, yeah, it's like fun to stumble across these actors when they were young. Yeah, I think it's great. I just think it's amazing how much stuff people have sort of done this. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So... Who do we want to see in Doctor Who that we haven't seen yet as a guest star? Um, Got anybody you're itching to see? <laughs> you know, there's so many. I mean, the thing is, think of this the minute you, you hang up, right? Yeah. Um, I think I'd like to see Phoebe Waller-Bridger. Oh, yeah. Um, I think she'd be a real hoot. Mm -hmm. Um. I, I would like to see Sean Pertwee. Yes. Yes. That um, would be fun. That'd be nice. We've, we've already, already had, had David and Michael Trout in both. Yeah. And Davidson's had his kid in. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, man, there's just a ton of really interesting people. Maybe Charlotte Rich. Oh, Charlotte Ritchie's already been on Doctor mm. Who, so never mind. Mm. Um, uh, man, there's just, there's, there's just a ton of really talented people that are doing sure things right now too um i you know this is an older actor who didn't do doctor who although she's done some work on audio lately but i'd love to see sean phillips oh yeah who again if you don't know sean phillips is livia and i claudius uh the reverend mother in the david lynch dune um much older actress now but man her voice and her acting presence would just be incredible yeah. Even if she was just voicing over an alien character or something, it would be fantastic. Um, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that that's kind of my wish list. I think um, maybe Don French might be fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, her her ex husband's been in the show. Lenny Henry yeah. was in Spyfall. Yeah. Adrian oh. Edmondson would be good. Oh, fantastic. And he's done Star Wars recently as well. He was, yeah, you know, one of the admirals in uh, The Last Jedi. He's great. Yeah, I think I think he'd be good. Um, but there's, there's a handful of people that might be interesting, sort of. I think, you know, I think um, everyone's talked about Chris Marshall being Doctor Who and stuff. I think he'd be a mm. fun sort of one off guest. Mm. Um, maybe Martin Clunes doing something different. Uh, yeah. as well you know so, yeah. um yeah so there's a couple sure um you know we we mentioned christopher ryan uh from the young ones has been in the show obviously and you, you mentioned adrian edmondson and fortunately rick miles no longer with us but he could have been yeah. an interesting guest star but nigel planer has never done it it might be interesting to get him in somewhere yeah um tony robinson might be a fun one yeah, he'd be tends, good too. He tends to be too busy doing history documentaries these days, but you yeah. know, and and uh, Big Finish had brought Michael Palin in for a Torchwood that was just fantastic and a fantastic use of Michael Palin specifically. And uh, we've had 
Cleason, and Terry Jones and Graham Chapman can't do it anymore, but Palin could be an interesting one. Yeah. Of course, it's always fun to see these new young actors and see where they're going to end up, too. So, yeah. Yeah. I think um, I'd like to see. Um, oh, I'm losing, I'm losing her name now. Um, I will think of it. Keep going. I'll think of it in a minute. Um, okay. Hmm. Oh, I'll think, go ahead. I'm blanking um, myself. I'm trying to think who else I might want in there. So. Hmm. Kelly McDonald. Hmm. I'd like to see her okay. do it. Um, the Michael Gambon uh, thing was great, too. It was, sure. I, just as a throwaway that, that, that completely dawned on me. Um, I think he, you know, he did, he had a great cameo. I, I just wanted to mention that because I sure. popped into my head. Um, you know, we've seen, we've seen. Shirley Henderson, she'd be great. I think Rose Byrne would be interesting. I think um, Gabriel Byrne would be interesting as well. Um, you know, I, I thought of another name that I might like to see that Shitty's already got some experience working with. And that's Jillian Anderson. Oh, yeah. And she could play anything. I mean, she played an excellent Margaret Thatcher on The Crown. Yeah. So yeah, I think she could do something interesting with it. Yeah. Yeah. So there's yeah, and the thing is, the minute we um, don't expect that we'll ever see someone in Doctor Who, we suddenly will. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, there's so much more material we could cover here, but we only have so much time, so we should probably start winding this down. Yeah. Um. Thanks everyone for being here. Hope you're enjoying the convention. Uh, Rob, do you have anything you want to promote? Yeah, I just want to, uh, outside of the um, Modern Musicology podcast that I that I do, hmm. and any Coffee Weekend Justice podcast I do, I do a show on Louder Than War Radio out of England called Antics. It's on Mondays. Uh, if you go to Louder Than War Radio, you can you can find uh, the streams of the shows and different things about that. But also the uh, Outside In, the newest edition of ATV's Outside In, um, I wrote about uh, the Three Doctors, which a lot of the guests that we have this weekend have written for that uh but that's my newest hustle um there so i want to mention that great and as always i just want to remind folks in the twin cities that we've got the model railroad museum which is about 90 years old now uh down university and transfer road by the old amtrak station uh this time of year we have night trains going on on the weekends where you come in after hours we have the lights dimmed down and all the displays are lit up and look really cool. And my Lego club has got lots of wacky stuff going on there. All right. Well, console room 2024, keep enjoying the con. Hope to see you at other panels. Have a good day.